India. Let me start by introducing the speaker for today. So the title of the talk is an introduction to Looker, which is Google's BI platform. And this talk is brought to us by Shivaraj Ambat, who is uh, uh, who's currently working in Tech Mahindra, where he's a principal consultant as well as a senior fellow. So he's been in Tech Mahindra for uh, more than uh, 10 years. He joined in January 2011. And till now, he has had various roles within the company. So one of his key roles is, uh, you know, when new project requirements come in, uh, he does a skill gap analysis and then he goes on to design a course, develop the course and, and then take it to delivering the training uh, for, for in, uh, employees internally. He also does uh, software development. Uh, he develops applications for in-house use and then uh, gets himself involved in POCs. He has represented the company in external hackathons and conferences. And, uh, you know, he has over the course of many years, he has won a lot of awards. You will be, you know, uh, you'll be surprised number of awards he has won. Uh, in 2016, uh, he was awarded uh, at the Embedded Systems Conference. So that is one of the probably pre prestigious awards. And in 2015, uh, you know, your story typically conducts uh, annual events and hackathons. So as part of uh, TechSparse 2015, he was uh, the winner there. So that was a 20 hour hackathon. So where he uh, developed an application to translate online learning uh, content in English to Indian regional languages. So when I, uh, you know, recollected this, I thought maybe, you know, this is something uh, if the solution is mature, this is something Devopedia can also use because all our content is in English. So we could, you know, appeal to a new set of audience by trans translating it to Indian uh, regional languages. And then the same year in November of 2015, uh, he was a winner of Smart City Solutions Codathon. Uh, not only that, within Tech Mahindra, you know, they have this practice of award awarding something called ACE, which is Associates Consistently Excel. So, uh, you know, Shivraj has been consistently getting this award over a course of many years. And in 2016, June, Training Magazine, which is a US publication, they selected uh, Shivraj as uh, one of the top 20 emerging leaders. So that, that again, you know, is a testament to, uh, you know, his pedigree and caliber. And although, you know, as you can see by these numerous awards and his participation in hackathons, uh, his involvement in uh, developing POCs. So although he's in a very senior position, se senior leadership position, he's uh, at the heart still a developer, very hands-on. So I think uh, we couldn't uh, ask for a better uh, speaker today to lead us uh, through Google's product called Looker. So with that introduction, I would like to hand over to Shivraj. Thank you very much, sir, and uh, for the wonderful introduction as well. So, hello, everyone. Good evening and uh, welcome to the session, which is titled An Introduction to Looker. Uh, so, before I start, I would like to thank the entire Devopedia team for providing this opportunity to present this uh, session today. So, about me, I mean, uh, uh, Arvind, sir, already has given a very detailed introduction, but I just wanted to share my coordinates here. and. Uh, most importantly, I wanted to just mention that uh, whatever opinions I am, exp uh, you know, expressing in this session are solely my own and do not ex express the views or opinions of my employer. Now, <clears throat> so what I'm uh, planning to cover in today's session is that we'll begin by uh, looking at what Looker is, what you can do with it. Uh, I mean, obviously, you probably might be already knowing that it's a BI platform provided by Google. Uh, so we'll just delve into the details here, like what you can do with it, uh, who uses Looker, and what are the sample use cases. And uh, we'll also discuss about how Looker works internally. We'll have a look at the reference architecture, and then uh, some Looker terminology like uh, Looker ML blocks and actions, etc. And then I'll spend the rest of the time uh, giving some di demos as well on the platform. Now, uh, Looker is. Uh, at the heart of Looker, there is a modeling language called LookML, which is a proprietary language, uh, which is used to generate abstracted SQL or SQL, and it provides a modeling layer. 
So uh, that's uh, one area that you know I will briefly touch upon before we uh, wrap up the session. Now, for the sake of those who are probably not aware what business intelligence is, uh, just a quick introduction. It is an umbrella term that includes applications, infrastructure, and tools, and best practices that collects, stores, and analyzes the data produced by a company's activities. So BI is the critical last mile for getting value from data. As we all know, if your data is sitting logged in a database, it is not providing value to anybody. So a BI platform or a BI tool is what actually helps you to get value from data. And that's what Looker is. So Looker is a little more than just a BI platform. So we will see what uh, other you know, functionalities it provides in the session. So if you ask me for an elevator pitch about Looker, uh, more than just a BI tool, Looker is a complete data platform on Google Cloud that lets you analyze and visualize your data interactively uh, to make better business decisions. So that is a one line description of what Looker is. Now, what you can do with Looker, you can uh, do in-depth data analysis. You can integrate insights across different data sources. You can build actionable data-driven workflows, and you can also create custom data applications. So in short, Looker is a one-stop shop for all your uh, BI analytics, visualization, and data management needs. Now, Looker pricing is actually customized based on factors like number of users and the scale of deployment. So I don't have any number as such because they have not given it to their website yet. Uh, so it all depends on the number of users and the scale of your deployment. So Looker has pricing specialists who will work with uh, the customer to ensure uh, an ideal pricing structure which suits the business needs. Now, why Looker? So let's look at Looker from the perspective of a market research and advisory company like Gartner. So Gartner sees Looker as a challenger. So when you uh, when you look at the Gartner's quadrant, so this is the 2021 magic quadrant for analytics and business intelligence platforms. So they have these four quadrants like challengers, leaders, niche players, and visionaries. So when Gartner defines uh, Looker as a challenger, it means that Looker has the potential to challenge the status of established leaders uh, in the quadrant like Microsoft, Tableau, et cetera. So there are other uh, you know, vendors also, as you can see in this uh, uh, quadrant. Uh, so. Uh, the year uh, or probably two years back, Looker was actually a, just a niche player. So while I was tracking its uh, progress following its acquisition by Google Cloud, uh, it has got increasing uh, market recognition and uh, consideration by buyers. So now Looker is an integral service which is offered as part of the wider Google Cloud platform portfolio and uh, is also part of the go-to market efforts of Google. So with uh, you know increasing uh, support coming from the Google Cloud, uh, you know, partners and uh, all the, uh, you know, the ecosystem. Uh, we can definitely see a Looker in the leaders quadrant very soon. Is the is the expectation. Uh, so who uses Looker? So these are just some companies, just for the sake of uh, those who are curious to know whether uh, Looker is being widely adopted. So this is just a snapshot of a few. Uh, leading companies which, who are actually using Looker. I've also provided the source uh, of this information in the slide. So you can see like top companies like Sony, Amazon, IBM, Spotify, Kickstarter. In fact, there's, there's a longer list. I could not put all the companies here. So over 1,600 uh, companies, industry leading innovative companies are supposed to be using Looker uh, as per their official LinkedIn page. And I also found, uh, you know, uh, other companies listed here like Kohler, Cisco, Mitsubishi, etc., from specindia.com. Now, Looker makes it easy to uh, choose, customize, and uh, create variety of interactive dashboards and and visualizations, real-time visualizations. So uh, these are some of the sample use cases, which is actually featured in the website. Uh, so just to ensure that you know whoever is new to uh, business intelligence, they are aware of what kind of uh, you know applications you can actually use Looker. So in retail, you can use it to monitor inventory levels, and you can programmatically remove items from the site when they are out of stock. So that is what uh, you know that action in you know that the, the data enabled workflows that you can integrate in the business uh, uh, you know in the BI platform helps you to do. 
in uh, telecom media and entertainment uh, you can use looker to analyze your return of investment on digital ad spend by optimizing bits in real time with ml bitbot trained with gaon data so this is like uh, you know a facility what looker provides so that you can have your own ml models and bots uh, you know using the information what looker actually provides uh, to enable these functionalities in healthcare you can use uh, looker to incentivize incentivize value based care with custom self service analytics uh, for physicians and in financial services you can uh, use looker for processing loans faster by using machine learning to create more accurate predictions for loan play paybacks now how looker works uh, so this is just a uh, sample data analytics architecture i just picked it from the internet so this is uh, of a company called vida health uh, who is actually using looker so this is just to give you a, uh, an idea how looker is actually used uh, by one of the customers now uh, as you can see on the left hand side there are variety of sources right so those are transactional data coming from different applications like claims data labs data uh, by the way vida health is into the healthcare uh, segment so they have all these different uh, kinds of data coming from different sources like claims data labs data eligibility data so we can classify all these as transactional data now in most of the b2c segments you also have external data coming from uh, sources like ads or maybe from youtube or maybe from social media etc so you may have a uh, lot of data coming from multiple sources and these this, this data comes in lots of shapes and sizes and formats so they have to be first uh, you know processed you you need to probably extract data you may need to transform them or sometime even prepare them uh, and eventually you have to push them into some kind of storage layer so the second uh, layer that you see here the data lake it can consist of a combination of uh, databases or maybe uh, a, a cloud storage in in google cloud for example you might you have these different offerings uh, so google cloud provides you a managed service called cloud sql which is nothing but a hosted uh, uh, or a managed oracle or a postgresql or a mysql or a mysql database on the cloud uh, you also have cloud spanner which is horizontally scalable and then you have cloud storage which is an object storage uh, service provided by google cloud so you may have any kind of uh, storage layer Uh, implemented which actually stores the data now if you are a data analyst all that this is all you need so once you have the data in this data lake you can use languages like for example sql if you are if you are to work with the relational databases you can use a structured query language or sql and you can query the data and you can derive insights but majority of the users uh, especially in the uh, in the company where you have different roles you have a lot of business users you have executives you have leadership uh, you know uh, people in the le leadership roles etc they may not be knowing sql so how do they derive insights from this data so they will have to depend on the data analyst and that that there is a bottleneck because whatever the data analyst understands uh, is important that is the only data that the business users get to see so looker uh, provides you uh you know looker addresses this kind of a situation where looker will generate sql queries for you so all you have to do is use a very user friendly interface as the as the end user uh, or as the data analyst even you you can have the uh interface which is much more user friendly where uh, depending on the business domain you have terms uh, which are not necessarily matching the database columns of the schema right because as we all know in when when you create databases you will have n number of uh, columns uh, some of them may not be really useful for the end user so instead of the end user being aware of the database schema and understanding that these are the columns that uh, will give me this information or maybe he wants to write some uh, you know or he wants to programmatically derive some data uh, all that is abstracted for you by looker so looker generates sql queries and submits them against a database connection so without knowing the underlying data structure users can ask questions and get the information they want and not only that uh, you can also enable other users in the organization to access the data as required so rather than giving complete access to the data which might be confidential or business sensitive you can actually create uh, those access controls in place so that uh, users get only the data what they are authorized to view 
In addition to all these, you can also integrate machine learning workflows as well as other kinds of uh, you know business workflows downstream uh, based on the uh, in insights derived from this uh, looker. You can actually integrate other workflows as well. So this is a in a nutshell how actually looker works in an enterprise uh, setting where you have other layers as well and you have data coming from different sources. Now inside looker. Uh, this is the Looker reference architecture. So how actually Looker works. Uh, so Looker platform powers different types of data experiences. As you can see on the top layer, this is the kind of application experiences that you can get. So one is that modern BI and analytics. You can uh, use Looker to configure real-time reports and dashboards and, and which, which actually uh, provide you in-depth uh, analysis functionalities. You can double click and you can uh, derive in-depth analysis. Integrated insights uh, where Looker provides uh, or Looker works seamlessly with your existing BI setup. If you have one, you can infuse data with your existing uh, tools and uh, provide more effective results. And you can also empower users for data informed decisions. Data-driven workflows, uh, this is what we discussed in the previous slide. So Looker's platform, uh, stimulates any operational workflows that are required to put the data uh, to work on every uh, you know segment of your business and custom applications uh, that is the fourth part where you can actually build your own applications uh, using the data that uh, you know is derived from Looker. now looker the the looker layer here is the one that is abstracting the database for the end users so as you can see on the uh, at the bottom, you have this uh, database layer. So this can be any SQL database. So Looker is going to do the querying uh, depending on what is required. So if you have configured dashboards, in in short, uh, in you know, in subsequent slides, I will also uh, show you what are the different parts of a dashboard that you can actually configure. So you have multiple things that you can configure uh, dashboards, or you can configure what we call explores or views or even measures and dimensions, etc. So once you create that modeling layer, Looker is going to do all that querying with the database without the user ever getting to know the underlying data structure. And uh, the content in uh, Looker can be in different shapes. Uh, as I said, you can have complete dashboards or there are like partial dashboards or maybe parts of the dashboard, what we call them as uh, looks. So uh, the, I mean, uh, Looker actually has got some terminology that we'll discuss shortly. So you can uh, have the data uh, made available in the forms of looks or explores or uh, measures, dimensions, etc. So these are the different uh, types of data that you can derive from the underlying database. Now talking about security, uh, since Looker's platform is sitting on top of the database, uh, it's very important to have uh, a secure access as well as a secure connection. Now Looker writes a query on its own to access the data to answer the questions or maybe to give you the results that you're expecting and these are stored only in a temporary cache and uh, because you have a single point of access for your data through looker you can establish a robust uh, governance infrastructure as well as the security system in place uh, looker has all these different certifications you have like ISO 27001 is understood. It is a must for anybody working with, uh, you know, or uh, to for security compliance. You also have uh, HIPAA compliance, which is for healthcare, uh, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, and also the other uh, kind of certifications which are mentioned here. Now, when administrators are providing access to users, they can provide granular permissions uh, by individual user or by individual groups, and they can restrict data access from uh, the database down to, uh, I mean, you can have almost row level or column level uh, access control implemented in place. So Looker provides all these security features as well. Coming to direct uh, database connection, Looker supports, uh, since uh, we discussed that Looker actually generates a SQL for you, for which is required for to get the data which is required to populate the dashboards and views. What kind of databases are supported? So Looker supports almost 50 plus uh, SQL dialects and uh, it writes efficient and reusable SQL directly to your database. So 
uh, when you when you actually create a project, Looker will automatically scan your existing database schema. It will infer all the relationships to quickly build a basic data model for you. So the, that is automatically done. On top of it, you can take advantage of uh, different Looker uh, functionality. So Looker provides what we call as uh, analytical blocks uh, with which you can actually uh, configure or you can actually build on common data sources like, for example, Google BigQuery or maybe SFDC. So these are all uh, common data sources. So you can actually leverage these pre-built analytical blocks when you want to query data sources which are not necessarily uh, queried using SQL. And uh, Looker leaves all the data where it is, uh, you know, secure. That means in your database. So it is only going to query in real time. So there is no intermediate storage layer or maybe a cache uh, which actually stores data, which can actually compromise the security at any point. So uh, since Looker is directly sitting on top of these data sources, and if you look at some of these data sources like Google BigQuery, Google BigQuery can in fact store data in the order of petabytes. So, which means that Looker can uh, query in real time and without any performance uh, issues, it can actually retrieve the data from the underlying sources. So that is the uh, way all these, uh, you know, blocks and the abstracted SQL is actually generated for you. Now, for those who are already familiar with other BI tools, uh, and I don't want to like, you know, specifically talk about how it is different from, uh, you know, a one particular vendor or the other, because we get to work with all these uh, different products. But uh, generally, if you look at uh, Looker, it is probably it is not very different from other BI tools, but architecturally, it is different. So one is that it sits on top of the database. So it, it is fast and uh, it fully leverages the databases. Uh, you have access to row level detail. Uh, and as I said, uh, you know, if you're querying BigQuery, et cetera, you have access to petabytes of data uh, and it is able to query, uh, you know, such huge data sets without having to ext extract a subset. And uh, users can get, uh, you know, access to uh, the information without having to know the underlying data structure or the intricate details. So you can have your own custom data model. So we'll discuss about this uh, look ML in detail in the subsequent slide, what exactly it is and why it is bit, why it is an advantage. Because that is the heart, that is at the heart of the innovation of Looker. And uh, Looker is cloud-based, which means that you, I mean, you can also have an offline installation of Looker if you want to, but generally Looker is available on the web. So there is no download, which is actually required for the user. You can access the same uh, interface on any device or maybe you can plug it into other tools or you can even embed the dashboards in web applications and so on. So that convenience is there. So you can just embed the Looker dashboard as an iframe or if you are uh, planning to actually create your own UI layer, then you can actually use the API, get the same data and populate it with your own libraries. So that flexibility is also there. And most importantly, it is built by developers, which means that uh, all the developer uh, workflow ideas, like uh, you have generally in development, we talk about, uh, you know, development, staging and production, right? So th that's the sequence in which any application is actually deployed in in, uh, in enterprise setting. Uh, Looker actually brings the same uh, workflow idea to data analytics. Uh, I don't know which other tool provides this feature, but you have option to, uh, you know, do version control, uh, do transactions and rollbacks, etc. Do code reviews. Uh, if, you, if you have a larger team, then you can actually have collaboration features uh, but when you're working with the LookML layer. So LookML layer is where you build your data modeling layer. Uh, you know, th that's a data modeling layer for you. So you can have collaboration at that level to build those models. And uh, as I said, you can work in dev mode and then once uh, you, you are ready with it, you can actually, uh, you know, post it in staging, uh, do your trials and testing, and finally push it into production. And if required, you can roll back. So th this, this is also an important uh, feature provided by Luca. Now, before I get into the demo, I just wanted to uh, make uh, these terms clear because we will be discussing about these terms when we uh, switch to the demo. So the first thing is LookML. As I told in the beginning, it's a Looker modeling language which generates abstracted SQL and provides a modeling layer between database and user. Now, why is it required? Now, if you look at it, every business will have its own unique language and vocabulary. 
like uh, for example i mean i'm just randomly taking some terms like uh, net revenue or maybe some other business might want to call it as total sales somebody else might want to call it as profit so every business and every company will have its own vocabulary now uh, it is the, these these metrics are very critical for the business users but unfortunately you know when uh, you have larger teams or maybe uh, new employees etc it becomes very difficult because not everyone speaks the same language people might use uh, different terms or different metrics in a, uh, you know and then there is always uh, a possibility for miscommunication and frustration now in looker uh, you can actually have your own custom vocabulary defined and the data analysts can catalog these uh, terms or the business metrics which are at the heart of the business they can catalog it in lookml that is the modeling layer and the data analyst can get all the knowledge of what your data means to you uh, and you know you, it, they can actually give you that uh, simplified view of the data depending on the terminologies that you prefer so if you want to know what is the net revenue or maybe uh, somebody else says customer value or lifetime customer value somebody says total sales so these are all confusing business terms so they can actually define a catalog of these terms they can predefine the kind of data which will be made available for these terms and so the business users will not have to worry about the internal data structure so whatever is the database schema or the column name used they will only have to you know uh, work with these models which are actually built as part of the lookml so that is uh, one of big one big advantage so users can work with the data without having any technical skills and uh, use the terms that they are familiar with so if you if you ask what is the big difference between looker and any other uh, bi platform more than the technical differences the first difference that i would uh, uh, you know say that it is extremely user friendly and uh, very easy to learn and very easy to pick up as well so this is just a continuation of the previous slide what we just uh, talked about so specifically lookml is like a language for describing dimensions aggregates calculations and data relationships in a sql database so without having to know sql you get the same information in a much more user friendly way and looker uses a model written in lookml and uh, to construct sql queries against a particular database now uh, by looking at this point uh, we might think that looker uh, is basically actually writing sql for you in fact it is just not writing or reinventing uh, the wheel looker is actually refining and improving sql as, uh, as well uh, so it, while it maintains the power the flexibility and uh, the precision of sql it also addresses the areas where uh, you know uh, sql is actually frustrating for example uh, sql is not modular uh, whereas look ml is modular in nature you can it is extensible you can have collaborative features here uh you can have version control so these are different ways in which actually it improves on sql and uh, in in sql you actually write a query and once you are uh, done executing that query you actually throw away the results whereas in lookml it is reusable you can actually uh, transform these queries into uh, what i called earlier like the views or the uh, building blocks of the dashboard so you can have them created as objects so that you can always reuse the queries what you have already created now coming to the lookml structure the hierarchy of lookml structure is uh, it, it is actually structured using following objects so at the top level at the uh, you know you have what we call the projects which are nothing but libraries of lookml project so a looker project maps one is to one with a git repository lookml uses uh, or looker uses git so if you create a project it is like equivalent to creating a git repository and a project is composed of one or more models now what is a model model is basically uh, you can call it as a, a one is to one uh, you know its counterpart of a database so uh, rather than just having one model for a database you can have multiple models depending on the kind of data that you want to use a uh, model internally is a set of what we call explorers so an explorer is nothing but a set of pre-joined views for business user analysis so a group of explorers uh, together constitutes what we call a model a view is a database table or maybe it's a logical representation of one so that is uh, kind of one of the fundamental building blocks of uh, looker 
and each view will contain dimensions and measures now in the normal database uh, terminology we call them as database columns uh, and aggregate functions so dimensions are nothing but the database columns or maybe the logical representations uh, they could also be like derived values and measures are nothing but aggregate functions so in short you have a project so this is the illustration so you have a project at the higher level uh, which consists of models models will consist of explores explores will consist of views and views might contain dimensions and measures as required so just to briefly explain what these individual terms are uh, a project is a highest level lookml object uh, it's uh, it typically maps one is to one to a data source or a db connection and a project is composed of uh, multiple objects like models views explores and dashboards uh, when you say a model it contains data connection uh, data connection information first of all as well as definitions of explores now it can be used to restrict user access to certain explores and separate and organize explores by business area now what is not mentioned in the slide is that you can have multiple models for the same db connection and each model probably can be uh, used to expose different data to the users for example the sales data uh, you know it you may be exposing uh, different kind of data uh, to different stakeholders for example the executives might get access to a certain uh, you know data whereas the agents and uh, maybe the field service executives etc they might get access to uh, different data so you can actually create different models based on the same db connection and then you can build your views views and dashboards on top of it uh, so this is just a view of how it looks like in the uh, uh, you know in the looker platform so there's just a screenshot showing that uh, you can have these different models listed under the explore menu uh, we'll see that in the demo now explore is a view that users can query so you can think of the explore like uh, the uh, from statement uh, or the from class in a sql statement right so that's a starting point for a query so uh, users can run these queries uh, they can apply filters on top of it uh, they can create dashboards etc from the explore coming to a view view is a database table or it is just a logical representation of one and uh, inside at the views you may have dimensions and the measures dimensions are unique attributes of the data uh, for example if if you have an airport data set uh, values like city elevation etc they they may be uh, classified as dimensions and measures are aggregations uh, or uh, of of uh, values like count or average etc so these basically uh, help to calculate your kpis and help your business users analyze data using different aggregated attributes so apart from looker uh, ml uh, the look ml that we just discussed looker also has what we call looker blocks these are building blocks or pre built pieces of code that you can leverage to accelerate your analytics uh, so just to give you an idea if you are trying to build a dashboard uh, you may have to have different kinds of charts i mean that is something that everybody will be able to recollect uh, or relate to so you may have pie charts you may have donuts you may have different kinds of uh, charts that you may have to build so these are all available as part of the visualization blocks as you can see here you have uh, vis blocks uh, which stands for visualization blocks likewise you also have other kinds of blocks like analytic blocks source blocks data blocks embedded blocks etc so these are all pre defined or pre built pieces of code that you can leverage to quickly build your dashboard so even with a basic understanding of what this uh, block does by going through the uh, documentation a business analyst can easily put up a, a you know a very sophisticated dashboard to bring uh, you know the meaning uh, to 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 show value from the data uh, looker also has support for looker actions which actually makes it easier to build workflows so for example if you want to like automatically trigger a notification in a slack channel or maybe you want to create a new issue in jira or you want to create a new customer list in marketo or any of uh, any such uh, you know workflows if you want to integrate you can actually Uh, do it here so if you can actually if, if you create alerts for example if uh, you you set some threshold values you can use uh, looker to configure that uh, alert uh, going in the stack channel uh, and and there are other third party interaction you know integrations also which is possible like if you use twilio etc you can also generate smss and so on so there are lots of ways in which you can actually derive uh, you know action oriented workflows from looker platform 
now let's switch to a demo now uh, if you want to work with looker the best way i'll just show you a way uh, in, in case those who are not aware of uh, you know this uh, facility i'll just show you how you can actually create a free account how you can actually play with looker so for which i'll use a, a particular site called uh, quick claps think I thought I had it open right so I think I might have closed it anyway let me let me open the Chrome browser maybe it got just got closed so just to save time I had already logged in and kept myself for, for the session unfortunately the Chrome window has closed so I'll have to start all over again. So the site that you can actually use is uh, Quick Labs. This actually provides you time limited access to uh, different Google services uh, or different Google Cloud services. You can create a free account here. Now, some of them are free and some of them you'll have to uh, use your credits and you can actually buy credits or you can actually get free credits also if you participate in some of the Google training challenges. So I'm just going to use my uh, personal account here. If you're creating a new account, you will not have any credits. But to work with uh, Looker, you don't need any credits. In fact, they are all free. Uh, as you can see, I have some 18 credits uh, left in my account, but I will not need that. I can directly go here and search for Looker. So once you have created a free account, you can go here and search and there you can see there are a number of labs which are uh, available for Looker. So I'll just pick up uh, some of the introductory labs uh, and I hope that uh, those who are interested will be able to uh, you know, explore the other labs as well. So. Let's look at the quick start. In the interest of time, I'll uh, do a very uh, a small demo. So I'm going to take this Looker Data Explorer uh, for this demo. So this, as you can see, it's an introductory lab. It's a free one. You don't need any credits and it takes about an hour. In fact, the lab environment is available for one hour, but you will not you will not require one hour to perform the steps which are given here. So this lab will give you a series of uh, instructions. The, there are these uh, different steps that you have to perform. And once you complete all those steps, uh, it, this uh, score will indicate how many steps you have completed. So you can actually use this to check as a checkpoint to check your progress as well. Now, uh, when you start this lab, so you can go through those instructions, uh, like what it's all about. And uh, when you're ready, you can just click on start lab and then your timer starts. So I have got this lab for uh, for the next uh, 59 minutes now. And uh, once this button is enabled, I should be able to access the Looker platform. So it is giving me a, a the uh, kind of a trial instance, uh, which is a temporary instance of Looker, which a uh, separate username and password. So in case you have got a Google Cloud Platform account, or maybe if you have already got a Looker account, uh, please be careful. Don't use your, uh, uh, you know, actual uh, account. Instead, you can use this temporary one. And the best thing that uh, you can do here is to open this in a incognito window so that you don't end up using your, uh, uh, you know, Google Cloud account uh, to do this. Uh, uh, to do these steps but in my case since uh, you know i have already logged out of my account i'm just going to use this uh, so i'm just going to click on open looker and that will open in a new window and here i have to provide my credentials so for the credentials uh, the temporary credentials is provided. I mean, they are provided here itself. So I can just copy them and paste them here. The username is going to be looker developer at quicklabs.net, and there is a password. You can just copy it 
and paste it here. So this is the home page that you get to see, and uh, it's a very, very simple interface. First of all, you can browse all your project files over here. So if you're working in a collaborative environment, then you will get shared folders, uh, which others might have shared some, uh, you know, code files with you. All that will be visible here. This, uh, the others are self-explanatory, the recently viewed ones, the favorite ones, etc. you will be able to view them. Most most importantly, uh, you will just need to create a board later, but uh, rather than creating a board from scratch, I'll show you the uh, bottom up approach where we actually start creating the fundamental components first, and then we will add that to a dashboard. So uh, you can actually follow these instructions, but I will, uh, you know, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to perform all these steps because it will take some time, at least, uh, you know, dep depending on the number of steps that I have to perform complete. It might take some time. So in interest of time, I'll just uh, demonstrate quickly what you can do here. So if you click on the uh, on the top menu, you have, uh, you know, uh, this this uh, this is a navigation menu that you're on the left. And then you have these uh, icons on the right, uh, which again, you can just explore on your own. Uh, what is important for us is the explore menu. So if you cl click on the explore menu, you will see what models are available for us. So here uh, we have like uh, these uh, sample models which have been made available. And uh, for this particular demo, I'll just pick up a very simple one, which is airports, because uh, that is actually configured for the lab. So I'm not sure if uh, the other models will work. If I try something, it might even, uh, you know, block my account. So uh, just to ensure that, uh, you know, I don't uh, violate their terms, I'm just going to work with the same data set which they have provided. So we'll open the airports one. And you can see on the left hand side you have all the details so you have dimensions and uh, you have measures and as i said in the beginning dimensions are nothing but your database column names and measures are like aggregate functions so you have uh, values like count uh, max min etc so these are like aggregate functions so if you click on any of these things for example let's say count you can see that uh, the airport count is uh, added here to our explore and uh, this will actually if i run i can actually see the uh, result so this is a predefined query which is already uh, you know built by looker for this particular uh, lab so if, when you add a database or when you add a new data source looker will do the scanning and it will understand the schema and it is going to populate these dimensions for us and then we can go ahead and create our own measures so you can see that uh, the uh, airport count there is 19,793 uh, records available in this particular data set now we are just seeing the result here in numeric value so this is for the data view and as you can see there are these three uh, sections so the data view that I'm seeing over here suppose if I want to render the same thing in a dashboard all I have to do is to switch to the visualization tab and uh, select what kind of uh, block I need to use so you can see that I have different kinds of blocks like table column unfortunately the uh, tooltip is appearing below the mouse pointer but if i hover on top of it you can see i can see scatter plot line graph area pi and so on and maybe for this particular one looker is is prompting that uh, a single value is uh, most appropriate because this is only one single value that i have to sh show here so i can go here uh, and i can i can choose to have this particular view in my dashboard but if I want to customize this view, maybe I just don't want to put this number directly, but I also want to provide a small title to it. I can open the settings and I can change the style. For example, I can say I want to change its color uh, instead of showing in uh, black or, or the default color. I can change the color. Like I can change the title. So if I say I want to show the title, uh, what is it that I want to display? Maybe I can just say here that this is the uh, airports count and that you can see is made available here uh, in the dashboard view like this I can go ahead and uh, you know uh, do maybe change its formatting style etc and once I'm done I can go ahead and add it to the dashboard so once 
So this is the simplest, uh, you know, block that we are going to have in our dashboard now. So how do I add it to a dashboard? Uh, before that, let me show a few other things. So we have seen this particular value, 19,793 coming from this measure. Now, this is actually a computed value and it does real time computation based on the data set which is available here. Now, how did it calculate this value? You can actually click on the SQL tab and there you can see our You can see the SQL, which is actually used to generate this value. This is same as the SQL that you normally use for any other uh, data source. Uh, you can actually, uh, you know, uh, when you are going with advanced uh, measures, you can actually see that this particular SQL is, uh, you know, uh, quite sophisticated, and uh, uh, it is actually generated uh, in a way that uh, you know improves the performance as well. It's optimized, in short. Now. I, once I have chosen the visualization that I want to use to depict this value in the dashboard, uh, I can just go to the top and uh, there is a gear wheel setting here where I can have these options. So I can either save it as a look and uh, when I say as a look, it's like a pre-built component uh, which, which I have actually built and then later on when I'm building a dashboard, I can go ahead and add those looks, whatever are required for my dashboard. But in this particular demo, I'm just going to directly save it to a dashboard. You can see that you have other options as well, like if you want to share it maybe with somebody else or maybe you want to uh, save and schedule or maybe you want to send it in other mediums. You have all these options. So collaborative features are all given here and you can also get the look ML of that particular uh, measure. If you click on get look ML, you will get the uh, the look ML view. Look ML, as I told you, it's a proprietary modeling language which uh, Looker uses uh, to generate this uh, SQL. And uh, you can also use it, uh, you, you have other options as well. So now, now let's just save it to a dashboard. So when I click on save to dashboard, right now there is no dashboard at all. So I can go ahead and create a new dashboard here. And I'll just call this as Devopedia dashboard. And I can select the Devopedia dashboard with a title. I can say this is the airports count. That's just the title and save to the dashboard. So now the airports count has been added to the Devopedia dashboard. If I click on the dashboard, I can either access it from directly from this link or once I am done, I can go ahead and add it, uh, access it from my uh, main control panel as well. But if I click on the dashboard, you can see that it opens in a new page and you will have a block with that particular value. So that's your first block. Like this, you can actually have other uh, values as well. Now, unfortunately, we are running short of time. But, uh, you know, in the same way, if, if you actually go through these instructions, you can see that uh, you can actually create these, uh, you know, uh, uh, charts, different kinds of graphs. So in this particular uh, lab, it's quite simple. They have just given you a numeric value as well as a, or, or a single value as they call it. Or, and, and maybe uh, you have a, a simple bar graph as well, a bar diagram. But there are other labs where you can actually use other kinds of visualizations as well with which you can actually create a quite sophisticated dashboard. Uh, so uh, I would, I mean, those who are interested can actually explore the, uh, the quick lab uh, you know, different labs which are provided under Looker. Uh, Shivaraj, I'm not hearing you. There is a microphone issue, I think. Oh, is it? Let me just check. I'm using an external mic. Is it audible now? Ramanathan, can you hear him? It is still faint. It was okay, just as a, just few seconds back, it went off. Okay, maybe it was a momentary issue, but is it okay now? Slightly better. It's slightly better, yeah. Uh, is it better now? No, it's a no. faint. It's closer. Just give me a second, please. Let me just check. Can you say something? 
yes yes i am just uh, checking the audio once again okay so i guess we can uh, yeah once this audio is fixed we can go to q and a all right is it better and uh, uh, during the q and a if you have additional demos to show you can show that's fine yeah sure 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 is the audio better now no it's something has changed it is very faint suddenly but i can hear you None of my settings have changed. I just verified that. Okay, okay. But I can hear you. Probably so the mic is away. Probably the mic is away uh, from yourself. I have to me now. Is it better now? I, I it's just very close to me now. No, it's worse now. Oh. Is there a volume controller? No, no, there is no volume controller. It's just a standard uh, USB mic. And Sanjeev yeah, has a query. Yeah, I've uh, given him the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Is it audible now or not? It's audible, no. but uh, not like earlier. It is faint. Okay, I'm switching to the laptop mic. I guess something went wrong with this USB mic. Perhaps you can uh, leave the call and rejoin. Maybe that might solve the issue problem. So I am uh, allowing the mic for all attendees uh, because we are going into Q and A. Yeah, maybe if he has multiple microphones. Yeah. Maybe it would have gone to other microphone. Right. So let him uh, join. Meanwhile, uh, you guys can keep your questions ready. I have so a couple of questions. Chat? Is there a chat? We can type our questions or no? Chat facility is not there, right? It's not there. Yeah, you can try. Is your chat enabled? No, it's not enabled. Is only enabled. available available to team members. Yeah, yeah, that's what we also found. Okay, so just ask him. He was mentioning about this Microsoft product for BI. No, just hold on. Let him come back on the call. Okay, okay. Yeah, Shivraj. Yes, is the audio better? Yeah, yeah, much better. Like earlier, yes. Okay, I guess there's a problem with the Teams app then. I just logged out and logged in. I didn't do anything else. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, apologies for that uh, issue. Ah, uh, no problem. So yeah. if you have any questions, I can take them now. Yeah, Sanjeev, you go ahead with your question. First. Yeah, uh, Shivraj, thanks. Uh, that re re rejoining solved the issue. Anyway, so because you are using that uh, browser, na, so that is why. My question was uh, on the Microsoft, you mentioned about some BI product. Uh, what was that? And uh, there might be some inherent uh, slow uh, speed loss when somebody use heavy computing on browser of Looker. So you mentioned that uh, install version is also available. Uh, as far as I recollect, uh, powerful BI tools like Tableau or Informatica or some other uh, Cognos business objects, they come in a installable format. So uh, is it possible with Looker or not? Hello? Yes, yes. So Looker has both uh, options. You can have, yes, yes. Am I audible? Yeah, yes, right. Yeah. So Looker provides both options. You have a hosted one. You have a self-hosted uh, option as well. Uh, so, depending on your need, you can go with any one of these uh, approaches. Okay. So, and uh, uh, we missed the demo, I guess, about the reporting part. If you recollect that business objects, uh, we get uh, very nice 
uh, reports or uh, other reporting tools, yes. right? Crystal crystal reports and other reports. So right. how does reporting happen in Looker? Okay, uh, so Looker actually gives you an option to build these real-time dashboards, okay? Apart mm -hmm. from that, they also have other uh, endpoints. So you, you can embed these in, uh, you know, your web applications from where you can actually get those, uh, you know, reports the way that uh, you are expecting. So that is one way. Programmatically, you can embed these dashboards in your applications and you can generate reports. That is one possibility. Or you can use the API itself and run some program to generate those reports programmatically. All ways are available. Okay. So uh, have you heard of this metabase? No, I think we'll restrict it to a couple of questions per person. Okay. Let's uh, give the chance to others. Mm -hmm. Sure. Then come sure. back to Sanjeev. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So I had a couple of questions, Sivaraj. Uh, is there any support for NoSQL? Because my data could be in MongoDB or Cassandra. What is the solution for that? Yes. Yes, yes. So Looker supports all kinds of data sources, not necessarily SQL. As I said, uh, you know, apart from SQL, you have these blocks, the pre-built blocks, right? Using which you can, uh, you know, uh, get the data out of even proprietary platforms, not necessarily only NoSQL. You can also get it from uh, SFDC or SAP or any other uh, popular, uh, you know, uh, platforms as well. So you have those blocks which give you those functionalities. But in that case, uh, what happens to the SQL commands? Or that data will be transformed to SQL. Yes, ultimately you will get it in the modeling la layer that uh, you have actually defined, right? You will get it in that format. So if it is a relational database, it will generate SQL. Any of these, uh, you know, data sources which actually uh, use SQL or a SQL dialect, like for example, even BigQuery, they use uh, SQL, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it's a dialect of SQL, by the way. So in such cases, you will be, it will be automatically converted into SQL. But for other kinds of data sources, it will, uh, it will populate that, uh, you know, using the blocks, it is going to get the data and it is going to populate. Okay, okay. My second question was on performance. So in one of your data sources uh, slides, uh, you showed a number of data sources. One of them was, uh, I think, Amazon Redshift. So now, uh, correct. Now, uh, where is Looker running? Is it? Uh, can, I am assuming Looker is running in uh, Google Cloud. Where, where exactly is it running? Or is it running in a VM correct. that you have configured? Yes. No, no, Google, uh, as I said, uh, you know, Looker can be accessed directly as a hosted, as a managed service provided by Google Cloud, or you can have your own self-hosting setup, okay? And all okay. you have to do is configure the connection. That's it. So all you have to do is provide the connection uh, string or the connection parameters. Okay, okay. So in, uh, in the presentation, you mentioned, uh, you know, Looker sits on top of the database. What do you mean by that? Let's say I'm using Amazon Redshift. Does it mean that... Uh, I can install uh, I, Looker uh, to be closer to the Redshift because I don't want to run the Not Looker necessary, on. not necessary. No, no. Not necessary, not necessary. I understood your question. Not necessary that it has to be in the same, uh, you know, cloud environment or so. As I, when I said it sits on the top of the database, I'm talking about the logical, uh, you know, uh, the dependency. It is not a physical dependency that it has to be in the same environment any, any, or anything. Okay, okay. As, long, as long as you provide the connection was, parameters. My intention was that uh, if it is in Google Cloud, then of course there will be a performance hit because the data is in Redshift, which is somewhere else. And then you're trying to analyze that data in another region. So for performance mm -hmm. reasons, ideally, they should, you know, the, your platform should be close to the data. So I was asking from that perspective. Right. Okay, okay. I, I got the point. So anyway, that uh, can be configured. I mean, depending on, uh, you know, the region that you're uh, hosting it, right? If, yeah, if yeah. it is uh, that critical, uh, especially with real time data, if uh, and if it's a large data set, and if, uh, you know, uh, that can always be configured close to the region that uh, you are looking at, right? Okay, thank you. Ramana, question. Yeah. yeah, I have one question. Uh, this Looker 
modeling language is a script, I suppose. Uh, is that made available for the developers or is it all under the hood? Okay, uh, it is not a kind of a programming language like a you know a high end high level programming language. It is just uh, similar to JSON. It is it is like your YAML or something, right? I mean, if you if you are familiar okay. with uh, uh, languages like YAML, it is also a okay. language. So it is similar uh -huh. to JSON. You you just have to provide those uh, parameters for mm -hmm. uh, those uh, the pre you know the, the kind in the in a certain way that they have actually defined. That's all. It is not uh, having any Pro programming constructs like uh, you know looping statements or conditional statements nothing like that it is just okay. a, a configurable language okay uh, that configurable language is open to developers if developers wanted to tweak it they can yes yes. It, right? yes yes in fact yes yes in fact in the interest of time i have not done that but uh, if you look at one of those quick labs right but uh, uh -huh. the, there is one data explorer that i have actually used Similar to that, there is one more uh, lab called Looker Developer Quick Start. If you go there, yeah. in like uh, 15, 20 minutes, you will understand how that uh, language is and how you can actually write your own views, etc. So if you can uh, explore that Looker Developer Quick Start, uh, I think okay. your questions will be answered. Uh, it actually shows you everything in a nutshell, how you can actually create your own models. Uh, it's very, okay. very simple, in fact. Okay, there is no free tier as such. It's only in Quick Labs for exploring. Right. Okay, okay, got it. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. So I have a follow up for Ramanathan's question. Uh, so, yes. I mean, he was asking from the developer perspective, but I think the real beauty of Looker is making things easier for the business users. So how do Correct. business users make their queries? Is it like drag and drop the way you showed, like clicking on that count uh, measure, possibly clicking on the dimensions? How Correct. do business users use it? Uh, do they even need to look at uh, look ML? Correct. Correct. Yes, uh, got it. So Looker can be used by a variety of users, business analysts or data analysts. You, you know, business users, all of them can use. Uh, so the one that I have actually shown you is the data analyst uh, or the business users view, where you don't have to do any kind of coding or you don't have to get into the look ML. But if you are a developer, all you have to do is in the same interface on the top, there is an option to enable the developer mode. So once you enable the developer mode, you will be able to access the look ML. So uh, the interface will be the same. Except that you, the developer will get some added, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, it, I mean, I would call them as added functionalities in his view. And uh, again, when I say a developer, it is not that the person has to know uh, anything as advanced as object oriented programming language or functional programming language and all that. It is not required. It is just that your user will be able to configure those blocks as required. Uh, so, you know, it, it is user friendly for everyone not just for the data analyst, even for the developers or for the business users, it is all very, very user friendly. Thank you for the work. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Okay. Sanji, uh, you have a question? Yeah, I was so asking I, that uh, meta, Metabase, uh, uh, there are some dashboards which we can uh, uh, define in Metabase and uh, in the amazon web services like in our previous project uh, we keep on running that uh, engine in mysql and we integrate metabase with that in the aws itself and on the fly our reports will be seen on the website as a plug plugin kind of thing so these kind of uh, right. things are available in looker there are a lot of ways in which you can customize it sir in fact uh, you know the quick labs that i have mentioned right if you mm. can just spend some, some time, even look at those instructions, right? Even if you are not interested in doing it manually, even mm. if you go through the instructions, you can see the screenshots. So I'm, I'm, I'm not able to relate to the question that you're asking exactly. Okay, so but, uh, uh, to give I a, believe that. Yeah, to give an analogy, suppose you get uh, temperature yeah. sensors, temperature uh, from various location of Bangalore city, uh, suppose 50 locations in Bangalore city. So from that sensor location, temperature is right. coming. 
and that is feeding into your database yeah. and it goes into aws and my metabase uh, aggregate that and display the consolidated single temperature for bangalore city on my website got it uh, got so it. like that like huh. yes got it got it so in in this case looker will not directly do it you will have to also use some other services of uh, google uh, which are meant for this purpose to collect that data right that uh, you will have to build that uh, pipeline first the data pipeline you will have to construct using the other google services you have pubsub you have bigquery and all of them so once you configure the data pipeline you bring your data into that data lake that is what i mentioned initially that you may do some processing so if it is streaming mm. data real time data you will bring it into that data lake which could be a big query or could be a cloud storage and then from there you will use looker to pull the data and visualize it okay okay fine so you mentioned about microsoft bi product also remember which one is that power bi power bi okay. it is power and bi that is that is also in premise as a installable or in cloud you have both options sir okay okay fine thank you thanks welcome thank you shivraj any other questions i think we are good okay okay thank you so much shivraj for that uh, very informative session and uh, the slides are nice uh, you pleasure. clarified uh, yeah you clarified the basic and essential terms of using looker and then showed us a quick demo how it works the dash making a dashboard using uh, measures and uh, dimensions so it was very useful and uh, probably those who are interested to try out looker can go to quick labs create an account and uh, you know try uh, one of the labs uh, i mean there are of course uh, easily a couple more more than one lab there for looker so you can try all of them and uh, this uh, rec recording of this video will be uh, this session will be available on youtube uh, by end of the day thanks again shivraj uh, for joining us thank, thank you shivraj. shivraj thank you very much and thanks for all the thanks for all the interesting questions one one last information i would like to share before i close is there is also a website provided by looker for training exclusively for training it's called connect.looker.com if you go visit uh, google uh, the looker home page that is looker.com you will find a link to connect.looker.com so there also you will find lots of information they are all free 